This video is part of the Beginning Farmers Demand webinar series. Thanks, John, for having me. My name is Florencia Colella. Today, we're going to review the basics of accounting and record keeping. A business with inadequate records can be likened to a ship in the middle of the ocean that has lost its rudder in navigational aids. It does not know where it has been, where it's going, or how long it will take to get there. Records tell the manager where the business has been and whether it is now on the path to making profits and creating financial stability. Apart from providing information on a business's financial direction, records are useful for a bunch of other reasons. Preparing income tax returns, doing year end tax planning, making manager management decisions, identifying strengths and weaknesses on the farm operation, diagnosing if the inputs you're using are worth the cost, and identifying and comparing price trends of the inputs. Planning, so if you want to add an enterprise or try something different, you can use records to help you evaluate that. Write a budget, obtain credit, prepare reports, prepare reports for partners, lenders, landlords, input providers, and government agencies, do estate planning. And even if you're just starting your business, I would encourage you to start thinking about estate planning and how you're going to transition. Either transfer this business onto a family member or sell it or simply get out of it. It's better to think about that upfront because how you purchase and own farm property when you're starting out has implications for what you're able to do later on. Find out how you compare to the industry is another thing you can do with your records. That's a process called benchmarking. You can also find break-even points, like how many units of a product must be sold to cover the fixed and variable costs of production. You can demonstrate compliance with regulations, establish insurance needs, monitor inventories, divide landlord and tenant expenses, and assist with profit sharing distributions and share lease arrangements. You can report to partners and share, shareholders if you have them, develop business and marketing plans, and split income and expenses in multiple owner businesses. So record keeping is the art of managing an organization's financial information throughout its life cycle, from the time of creation to its eventual disposition. The main activities of record keeping are identifying transactions that need to be recorded, classifying them, storing evidence, balancing, and reconciling. An organization's records preserve aspects of its institutional memory. The purpose of records management is part of an organization's broader function of governance, risk management, and compliance. So in order to identify what information we need to keep track of, let's review some basic accounting terms and practices. An enterprise. An enterprise is an individual crop or type of livestock within the whole farm. Most farm and ranch record systems summarize income expenses and profits for the entire farm, which allows them to evaluate the performance of the business compared to past years and compared to other farms. This is great. But reports broken down by enterprise are useful for determining which ones are contributing the most profit to the business and are therefore candidates for expansion. Or on the other hand, enterprises identified as unprofitable become candidates for elimination. Then we're gonna define accounting period. An accounting period is a period of time, usually a year, for which a financial statement is produced. It is generally recommended that a farm's accounting period follows the production cycle of the major enterprises of the farm and ends at a time when business activities are slow. For most crop and livestock farms, a December 31 ending date works well, so they use a calendar year accounting period. However, winter wheat, citrus crops, and winter vegetables are examples of crops where intensive production or harvesting activities may be underway around December 31st. These producers may want to consider a fiscal year accounting period that ends after harvest. Large dairies or commercial feedlots where activity is rather stable throughout the year may use any convenient accounting period. Family living expenses. 
So business expenses are those incurred in your businesses in your business in furtherance of making a profit. Living expenses are expenditures necessarily for a basic daily living and maintaining good health. They include the main categories of housing, food, clothing, uh, health care, and tra transportation. Personal and business records must be kept separate. Some family living expenses may be deductible on income tax returns, so it is especially important that they are tracked. This can be done using the farm accounting system, as long as business and personal records are not mixed, or a completely different system can be used. In this link, you can find a simple personal cash flow tracker, bit.ly slash personal cash track. So accounts receivable is the revenue for a product that has been sold, but for which no payments have been yet received. Examples would be custom work done for a neighbor who has agreed to make payments by the end of next month or grain sold on a deferred payment contract. Accrued expenses are expenses that accrue or accumulate daily, but that have not yet been paid. An accrued expense has typically not been paid yet just because the due date or payment date is in the future. Examples are interest on loans and property taxes. So accrued interest is the, enter, is the interest that would be due, not delinquent, but due if you were to pay off the interest that has accumulated up to today. It may not be due until a couple months from now or the end of the month, but sometimes you need to calculate what that interest would be if that loan was paid off today. And that's uh, an accrued interest. Okay, um, accounts payable. An accounts payable is an expense that has been incurred but not yet paid. Typical accounts payable are for items charged at farm supply stores where the purchaser is given 30, 60, or 90 days to pay the amount due. Prepaid expenses, seed is a typical one. It's a payment made for a product or service in an accounting period before the one in which it will be used to produce revenue. And depreciation. So the use of machinery buildings and similar assets over time causes them to grow old, wear out and become less valuable. This loss in value called depreciation is considered a business expense over several years. It also results in a reduction in the value of the asset itself. Examples of depreciable assets on a farm or ranch are vehicles, machinery, equipment, buildings, fences, irrigation wells, and also purchased breeding livestock. Land is not a depreciable asset because it has an unlimited life. However, some improvements to land, such as drainage tiles, can be depreciated. So all of those were examples of special types of accounts. The chart of accounts is a list of the broad categories of assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expenses used in the business. So for example, repairs is a common expense account. When choosing account names, it may be useful to look at the IRS Schedule F Form 1040, which is used to report farm income and expenses for income tax purposes. If the chart of accounts contains the same names as Schedule F, it makes it easy to transfer amounts from the accounting system to the Schedule F at the end of the year. So here to the left, there is a list of common income accounts, and to the right, there is a series of common expense accounts. And like we said, there's also asset, equity, and liability accounts, which we'll see next. So assets. An asset is an, any item of value, tangible or financial, on a farm or ranch. Examples would be machinery, land, bank accounts, buildings, grain, livestock, and the prepaid expenses and accounts receivable we just discussed. Inventory. Inventory is the physical quantity and financial value of products produced for sale that have not yet been sold. Farm or ranch examples would be grain in storage or livestock ready to, for sale that could be sold at the time the inventory is taken. The inventory is a part of, a, of farm assets, but we name it separately because of its importance. Liabilities. Liabilities are any debt or other financial obligation that must be paid in the future. Examples are loans from a bank or other lending institutions and accounts payable and accrued expenses, which we mentioned earlier.
And owner equity is the difference between business assets and liabilities. It is a part of the business owned outright by the owners. It's also known as net worth. It is a good reflection of the business's solvency and ability to take risk. So this is the fundamental accounting equation. It represents the relationship between assets, liabilities, and owner equity in a business. The formula can be written either as assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity or as assets minus liabilities equal owner's equity or net worth. Every accounting transaction affects at least one element of this equation, but it always balances. And we'll talk more about that later. So a journal is a record of all financial transactions, including the date, the amount, the account, the vendor or payer's information whenever applicable, check and deposit numbers and descriptions. And the general ledger is a statement that contains the different accounts for the business and the balances or totals in each of those accounts. We usually look at the totals in the general ledger to put together other reports. There are two main accounting methods, accrual and cash. The IRS allows most farm businesses to use either method, but once you pick one, you are required to get their approval to switch back if you want to. The difference between cash and accrual accounting lies in the timing of when sales and purchases are recorded. In the cash system, no transaction is recorded unless cash is spent or received, with the exception of depreciation. And this is regardless of when a product was produced or an input was used. But like we said, items may be purchased and paid for late in one year, but not used until the next, which, like we said, we call prepaid expenses, or items used in one year may not be paid for until the following year, which, like we said, we call accounts payable. So cash accounting is simple, and it has some advantages for many farmers and ranchers when computing taxable income for income tax purposes. The one major disadvantage is that since in farming, it is common to have a revenue and expenses recorded in a year other than the year the product was actually produced or the expense was actually used, neither the revenue nor the expenses may have a direct relation to the actual production activities for a given year. The result is that estimated profit may not truly represent um, profit from the year's production activities, and this can lead to poor management decisions. Accrual accounting, on the other hand, requires significantly more entries and accounting knowledge than cash accounting, but it provides a much more accurate estimate of annual profit than does cash accounting. Under this method, you report income in the year it was earned or due, even if the payment was not collected. And you report expenses in the year they were incurred, not necessarily paid. When the products are produced and sold in the same year, the cash is received. This is no different than cash accounting. The difference occurs when the product is produced in one year and sold in the next, for example. If a farmer produces a crop but places it all in storage for sale the following year when prices may be higher than in the year of production, there would be no cash sales, but presumably some cash expenses. Under cash accounting, there would be a negative profit for the year. This result is a poor indicator of the results of the production activities for the year, and it ignores the value of the crop in storage. Accrual accounting, on the other hand, includes an estimate of the value of the crop in storage as revenue in the year it was produced. The result is a much better estimation of profit. Most farmers use the cash method of accounting for their day-to-day -day record keeping and taxes. At the end of the year, they convert the cash-based income statement to an accrual income statement to get the true picture of profit. They do this by adding or subtracting year-end inventory adjustments for grain, feed, livestock, receivables, and payables. This is called a modify system. It's neither cash nor accrual, but something in between. It's kind of like the best of both worlds.
Then there is single and double entry systems. In a sing single entry system, only one account is changed when recording a receipt or an expenditure. A sale of fruit would have the dollar amounts recorded under the fruit sales column in the ledger. A check written to pay for feed would have the amount entered under the feed expense column. The other side of the transaction is always assumed to be cash, which automatically changes the balance in the checking account, like a cash or check register. The screenshot is from the farm records book, which I'll tell you a little bit more about later. A double entry system allows, allows to record the change in value in any two accounts. This system results in a bit more time spent keeping records, but it allows for some advantages. Flexibility, as it allows records involving more than one bank account. Accuracy, because accounts are kept in balance more easily or actually automatically. So there's less, change, less chances of errors and the fundamental accounting equation is respected at all times. And financial statements can be produced at any time directly from data already recorded in the system because double entry systems keep track of assets, liabilities, and equity accounts, whereas single entry systems do not. This last advantage though is a little bit tricky because independently from whether you use a sing single or a double entry system, you will end up needing to make adjustments to your financial statements at the end of the year. For example, you may need to adjust your true physical inventory for animals, feed or ag products in storage after shrink, or you may also want to incorporate some information on your capital assets valuation because usually you will have the cost value, which is what you paid for an item. Or you could also have the book value, which is the cost value minus depreciation taken so far. But you may also want to incorporate the market value, as these are valuable information to financing institutions. And increasing market value may, value, may make your business seem more profitable than it is, though. So you don't want to keep track of only market value. You still will need the cost value and book value. So there's always information to add at the end of the year. Okay, so now let's quickly take a look at a few reports. There is the depreciation schedule, which is a statement that summarizes the annual depreciation on all the depreciable assets. There is the balance sheet that summarizes what a business owes and owns. So we prepare it using the balances in the asset and liability accounts from the general ledger. And there's revenue, which is the value of product and services produced by a business during an accounting period. And revenue comes from income accounts. And there's expenses or expense accounts, which are costs or expenditures incurred in the production of revenue. And these two make up the net farm income, which is revenue minus expenses. Net farm income can also be understood as the return to the owner's equity, capital, unpaid labor, and management. The net farm income is reflected in the income statement. To prepare an income statement, we use the balances of all revenue and expense accounts. Profit is net income minus opportunity costs, or it can also be defined as revenue minus expenses minus opportunity costs. Opportunity cost is the amount an investor, you in this case, gains or misses out on when they commit to one investment choice over another. And there are ways to estimate that. Finally, there is the statement of cash flows, which is a statement that summarizes all sources and uses of cash during the accounting period. It allows comparison of actual cash flows with budgeted cash flows, and it also helps, helps complete a cash flow budget for the next accounting period. The value of a cash flow statement as opposed to an income statement is in its simplicity and timeliness. A cash flow statement is usually done monthly or quarterly, and it doesn't include non-cash accounting items such as depreciation. 
While it is not a good reflection of the profitability of the business, it is ideal for determining liquidity and specifically how well the business is positioned to pay bills at a specific point in time. So this is the end of the first video. Thank you.